Today I'm going to show you a review of this. It is the Waveshare GamePi 20, which is a hat and a Raspberry Pi case that comes with some buttons and a screen that you can use to play retro games on your Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'm going to switch it on here and you'll see how long it takes to start up. So the first thing you'll see is it has a battery indicator at the top, five little red lights that indicate how much battery, how much charge there is left in the battery. There are four buttons on each side. There, are, there is a select button, a start button, and there are two buttons on the top, the left and the right shoulder buttons. And that's all the buttons you get. Oh, and an on-off switch, but that's all the buttons you get. The buttons are a bit spongy, but they do work. There's no D-pad, there are four separate buttons, but that's not a problem. You can still work with that. You can see the buttons are all rotated, and that's because there's no groove to hold the buttons in the right orientation. So they do rotate around as you're using them, because your finger's covering them, I don't think that really matters. Well, your thumb is covering them. All your finger, it depends how you play your games. The, uh, you can see it takes quite a while for this to start up. It's still, what, we're a minute in, and the screen hasn't even come on yet, but it will. It will work. Now, the, um, the device itself is very, very cheap, and you can tell it's very cheap. It's got a sort of a plastic, there we are, just started up. It's got a plasticky kind of metal. I don't know what type of metal it is, but it's quite a cheap metal. Sounds plasticky, but I think it is metal. Case on the back. It's got an acrylic front on it. There's nothing protecting the screen. So that is the, uh, the OLED screen right there that you can touch, which is not good. So I, I got myself a little case separately that I, uh, that I keep this thing in, um, just to keep it a little bit better protected. And there it is running the latest version of RetroPie with a skin so that I can actually read the numbers, uh, the words, sorry. So if I go into favorites, you can actually read what that says. And if I go into last played, you can actually read what it says. Uh, of course, you can only play ROMs if you own the original game and have ripped the ROM off yourself. That's a copyright thing, otherwise you're a dirty pirate. Um, but you've got all these different systems, or cores as RetroPie calls them, that you can emulate. And the emulation is okay. Let's uh, load up Sonic the Hedgehog and show you what that's like. So let's go across like this and find our Mega Drive. Master System Mega Drive, that'll do. Let's scroll down, see if we can find Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, da, 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 Sonic and Tails, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. And you'll see what this is like. Now, there are some issues. So when I first got this, uh, this device, this case, I uh, used the default build, I think you would call it, the default um, image uh, to flash on the SD card that comes on the Waveshare website for RetroPie, which has all the drivers for this, the buttons and the screen, built into it. And there were two problems. The first problem was that it was impossible to press the up and right key simultaneously, and it was also impossible to press the select and start key simultaneously. And that's no good for certain games where you need to press up and right at the same time. Master System games, for example, where up is jump. And if you want to jump at an angle, you have to press up and right simultaneously. Well, you just can't. So the... Um, so, so that was a bit of a problem. The second problem was the sound. There was an annoying hiss and a crackle on the sound all the time. And the third problem was that the screen would just randomly go black. And then you'd press start and it would come back on again. But that was a bit annoying, having to essentially pause my game every now and then to keep the game playing. So those were, those were three issues that I had. And there's no volume control. You have to go into the software to change the volume of the... Um, to change the volume of the sound. Um, but that's okay, I'm not bothered about that. But the crackle was a bother. So I contacted them and I said, this isn't really very good. There's, some of the buttons don't work together and the sound is a bit iffy, so is there anything you can do about this? And I was surprised, but they responded. They responded very quickly and they said, follow the following instructions. And they told me to use the alternative, uh, the second method of getting software on this device. Uh, the second method involved installing a fresh install of, um, of RetroPie, the latest version, onto an SD card, and then either connecting a screen, which I haven't got the adapter, the HDMI adapter for the Raspberry Pi Zero, so I just used SSH because it's a Raspberry Pi Zero W. I SSH'd in and used the console using PuTTY 
to install all the drivers separately. And I followed the instructions and I did that and I managed to get all the buttons working, all the screen working, but the sound's not working. Now, while I'm recording this video, I still haven't had a resolution to that. I know the sound does work because I heard it with the original build, so I'm confident that the um, WaveShare team will send me a fix. And they have been pretty good at responding to messages. Uh, I just haven't had time to try their latest fix that they told me to do, but I'll get round to it and then we'll have sound as well. But the up and right buttons do work together and I'll, I'll show that to you now. So we'll just exit out of this by pressing the select and start button together. And we go up to something like Cannon Fodder, for example, which is a fantastic game if you've never played it. So we're just going to Cannon Fodder. Um, in the game Cannon Fodder, you have to move a cursor around um, in order to direct your military forces. And it's a bit of a nuisance if you can't move the cursor in, in a diagonal direction. Uh, but you can now because of following the second method on the Waveshare website that they, uh, that they gave me. <clears throat> So if I just go into here, uh, da, 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 start a game, doesn't really matter. And so if I press up and right, the cursor moves up and right, down and left together, up and right together. Sorry, up and left together before. There we are. Anyway, you can see I'm going in the diagonal directions with this cursor. No problem. And uh, so let's move over here. Oh, let's move down here. And you see, it works absolutely fine. No problems. So... The, uh, the game, it's, the, the device itself is fine. The battery lasts many, many hours. I don't have a problem with that. It can emulate um, loads of basic consoles. You saw the Mega Drive emulated then. It runs smoothly enough. The Game Boy Advance, it runs okay on the Game Boy Advance. Not quite as fast as perhaps I'd like it to be, but it works. Um, if I go into favorites, show you a bit of Pokemon, for example. One thing that's nice about emulating games is that you can fast forward things. So games like Pokemon, where you have to grind, which is a bit of a bit boring, but you can uh, you can skip a lot of that by fast forwarding. So I'll just uh, wait for this to start up. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, and let's load up a save game. That's the other thing you can save games without having to go into the save games. So if I whoop, let's go down here, let's exit out of here. So this is me running around the town at normal speed. And you can see it's okay, no slowdowns really. Uh, but if I put it into fast forward mode, uh, I'm on my bike at the moment, so it's got off my bike. You can see it's not actually that much faster. What's interesting is that you get to certain bits and it clearly struggles. That's still the same fast forward mode, but it's clearly struggling through that little bit. Because it is only a Raspberry Pi Zero, a Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's not wonderful. So let's, uh, let's look inside this thing and see how easy it is to assemble, because it is very easy to assemble. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the top. So the power, USB, HDMI, they're all from the board itself. They're on the Raspberry Pi Zero. The switch and the charging, they're part of the hat that you'll see in a bit. You've got your, uh, in fact, I'm gonna turn this off now. Let's exit out of this. Uh, let's go to start, quit, shut down, yes, there we go. And it will shut down, and then I'll be able to turn it off. Oh, look, we've actually dropped one of the batteries now. This wasn't fully charged when I started playing on it, so I don't think the battery is that short. Um, there's no, you can't actually see the light unless you look through the power hole, which is interesting. There we are, turn that off. That will stay on for a bit, but that will turn off eventually. Right, <clears throat> so you've got the speaker on the back, just one speaker, not stereo. You've got the buttons on the top. The buttons on the top, really loud compared to the other buttons, and the ones on the front, really loud, which is a bit of a pain. Right, let's, uh, let's take this thing apart. So when you get the box, it comes with everything well wrapped. I kept the bubble wrap just to show you. And this, I don't remember what was in that, something or other, don't know. There's a static bag that it comes in. So it comes with everything you need. It's also got some spare buttons and screws and things in there. Uh, but it also comes with two tools, a screwdriver and a wrench of some sort, I don't know what you call this sort of wrench, and you're going to need these two to open it up to build the thing. The screwdriver, unfortunately, is a teeny bit small for the holes, but it does work. You can get it to, uh, you can get it to work fine. So if I push a little bit, I'm not going to wear down all the edges of the, of the cross-headed screw hole. I suppose I could get my own screwdriver, but I can't be bothered with that. So anyway, here are the four screws. I'm going to keep them to one side so I don't lose them. Let's put them there so you can see them. Right. And you take this bit off, and so you've got your uh, your buttons there, which I'm going to just going to 
let them fall away. And there's nothing, you can see there's, although there's grooves in the buttons, there's no grooves anywhere else to hold the buttons and stop them from rotating. So when you set this up, you have to sort of line your buttons up. Um, well, I don't want X there, do I? Line your button up, A, B, let's put, let's put it on the, um, let's put it on the style of the SNES, the, the Super Nintendo. So you line your buttons up like that, you do the same with the direction keys, and you pop this on. So it's not actually that difficult to, to assemble. We're tearing this down though. The screwdriver does fit these screw holes here. There are four screw holes there. The screws are already on the board when you get it, so you have to unscrew it. Put this pad with its little conductive pads there. Put the pad on it. That's very straightforward. This bit here comes off using this wrench thing. And I found it actually quite challenging to line up the, uh, the wrench screw holes. I don't know what these types of screws are called. I found it quite difficult to line them up, actually, with the holes. It took a little bit of time and getting it just the right angle. So let's just put that to one side. Let's do it for this is riveting stuff. Maybe I'll pause this and fast forward it. And here comes the last one. Oopsie. Right, so there are your four screws there. Uh, and then it's a little bit awkward to get it out because I've already put the caps on these buttons. So you have to kind of wiggle it and manipulate it and give it a bit of a shake. But it does come out. And there we go. There's the Raspberry Pi in the bottom. There's the some sort of cheap metallic, yet plasticky sounding cover. Got the Raspberry Pi there, you've got the battery, pretty standard battery. Um, it says it's only 800 milliamp hours, but that's enough, it does the job. A single speaker, big loud clicky switches, covers on them, and that's it. So all you have to do is slot into the, uh, the GPIO port, the pins, should I say, the, uh, the, the, the hat. So there's the hat, so you can see the holes there. And there's the Raspberry Pi with your GPIO pins. So you just plug that straight in. If you want to change the card at any point, this is a bit of a nuisance. You have to actually remove the Raspberry Pi from the hat to, to change the, the SD card. Once the SD card's in, the speaker, pushed against my screen then, the speaker actually blocks off the card, so you can't get the card out without fully removing the Raspberry Pi. So reassembly then, you put the SD card in first, you plug in the Raspberry Pi into the hat, then you slot it in like that. Now it's just in reverse, so you put the four screws in the corners, then put the front on. So let's put the four screws in the corners. So I have found it easier if I screw in those four corner screw things, the brass screw things, a little bit first and then just tighten them with this wrench. That does make it a little bit easier. And they do tighten nicely as well. I think sometimes when you get these things, there's the possibility of over tightening. I haven't had that with this. I've taken it apart, put it back together a few times now. And I haven't yet, there we are, you can tell when it's tight enough. That's my experience. Let's carry on doing these up. We go, they're all tight. Now for the buttons, on the pad it says B is here, A is there, X is there, Y is there. So I'll say that again, it says uh, A, B, X, Y. And that's the Xbox 360 or the Xbox um, layout. I'm going to go ahead and use the SNES layout, not because I'm a Nintendo fanboy, I'm really not, but just because that's what was default on, uh, on RetroPie, so we might as well stick with it. And you can see, even if I do line these buttons up, they're going to rotate, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to shove them in place, um, using this to help me line them up. I saw videos online where people are getting sticky tape and taping them the right way around. Why would you bother? It really is not that tricky to just balance them on the tops of these rubber things, like this. Get your, your case front, and then just give it a wiggle until that. That did not, that wasn't hard. That was okay. So then you get your four screws, you put your screws in the corner, and you're ready to go. Let's do up the four screws in the corner. I mean, for, for an adult, you know, grown-up toy, I don't think this is particularly good, maybe. You'd go for something, um, something a little bit better, something a bit more robust. But for a kid's toy, yeah, it's fine. And it's going to keep me busy when I'm taking a group of year 12s and 13 physicists to Geneva to see the LH, the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC. 
I'm not going to have to sit there reading a book, you know, like it's the 19th century or something. I'm going to be able to take this little thing and tap away and play Pokemon like a grown-up that I am. Um, if you just want to play a quick game, of course, you switch it on, you do have to wait a while <laughs> for it to actually come on, as you can see from the beginning of the video. Uh, the other thing I'll say, definitely don't just switch it off because trying to, you know, if you switch it off and you corrupt the memory stick, the memory card inside it, because it happens to be writing to the memory at that time, then you have to reflash it, which means taking the whole thing apart to do that. And that would be a massive pain. Uh, I've written an SSH, SSH script that I can just run on my computer, which will back up everything. So I don't have to disconnect everything to back it up, but it would be a pain in the backside having to take it all apart just to reflash the thing in the end. So always make sure you shut it down properly when you are done. And there we go. And there we go.